In this video, I'll show you how to make use of Adani's WebSocket provider to build real-time features. Now, if you are using Adani's version 3.2 or greater, you won't have to set up anything. But if you are on an older version, then stick with me. I'll show you how to set it up from scratch. So very first, uh, we are going to install it from NPM. So I'll say NPMI, uh, save the module, call Adani's WebSocket. Once the installation has been done, we need to basically set up this provider. So inside our providers list, we'll say uh, Adonis WebSocket providers and the WX provider. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the namespace. So uh, it's going to be Adonis add-ons WS. So once that's done, we need a separate directory or a place where we can write all the code related to WebSockets. And we're going to do that inside app and the directory called WS. I'm going to create a file called socket.js. Now in this file, we're basically going to register our channels. Think of channels as basically a way to expose uh, the WebSocket server to the outside world. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say constant WS, we're going to use uh, that provider. And out here, we're going to register a channel called chat. Now, there is no other way to basically expose the WebSocket uh, server to the outside world. You have to basically create a channel. Now, if you don't have any logical entity or a channel, you can basically name it to root by passing in a forward slash. So uh, I'm going to rename it to chat. And out here, I'm going to bind a closure. Now, this closure basically gets executed every time a new socket or a new client joins it. So here, I'm going to say console.log, uh, socket connected, and basically socket.id here, OK? Uh, now, once this done, we basically need to load this file anytime we run our HTTP server. And that will be inside bootstrap http.js file. So out here, I'm going to copy it and WS rename routes to socket. So this is basically a way to require the file by, by making a dynamic namespace. So once that's done, let's go to our template and basically write some code on the client end to connect to our server. Uh, out here, I'm going to include a scripts tag, which is basically a reference to the client library. So uh, if I go to Adonis WebSocket client, oh, this one, and out here is a reference to the CDN file. So I open it, come back, paste it here, and next thing we're going to write some JavaScript code out here. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to connect to the WebSocket server, and that is done with the help of a WS global. And out here, we need to pass the domain that we want to connect to. That's localhost 3333. Now, since our HTTP server is running on the same host and port, we can basically pass in an empty string. Okay. Uh, once we have been connected to the server, we can connect to multiple channels by using the channel method. So I'm going to say io.channel, the name of the channel that we want to connect to, that's chat and call the connect method, which basically accepts uh, closure with the error and whether or not we have been connected. So here I'm going to say console.log error connected, okay? Or most probably we can get rid of this entire closure and we can say console.log here, okay? So if I run the server, npm run dev, Yep, it's running. Go to localhost 3333. For sure, we get null as an error after calling the connect method, and true means we have been connected. If we go to the server, for sure, we do see socket connected and that particular socket ID out here. Okay, now we have been able to connect to the channel. Let's exchange some messages. So here, I'm going to say socket.on message, like whenever we receive a message from the client. Uh, we're going to console log it. So I'm going to say received a message and the message here, which we are going to accept inside the closure. 
And on the client, we basically need to emit the message. And in order to emit the message, we need to have access to the client. So we're going to say constant client. And out here, client.emit. Uh, we're going to say message. Hello world. Okay, like the basic hello world. Come back, refresh. We do see socket connected and receive message hello world. Now, apart from knowing the connection of a socket, we can also listen for the disconnected event. And that can be done by basically attaching a disconnected method to your channel. So out here, we receive the socket again. Let's copy it, paste, and change connected to disconnected, okay? So let's clear the console, do a refresh. First it says socket disconnected, then connected to a new ID, and we have been able to basically receive the message from the client. Now in order to send the message back, we need to say socket.emit, and let's say we want to send an a message event with the same message back, right? So if I come back and refresh, for sure, we do receive the message. And on the client, we also need to listen for this message event. So if I come here and say client dot on message, simply console.log, refresh, nothing happens, and why? So very first, let me open a new window. If I open a new window, okay, so you're gonna take a little bit of time out here. I do receive a hello world message out here. And if I open the inspector here and refresh this window, now over here, I receive the message called hello world, which means the socket, which is basically everything the message does not receive its message back. And this is called basically reflection, where we are preventing the socket to receive its own messages. But in any case, if we want the same socket to receive its own messages, we need to say to everyone, which means to everyone, including me. So if I come back, do a refresh, yep, we do receive a message here, as well as here, if I refresh here and here too, right? So which means we can basically uh, emit messages from the client and from the server as well. <clears throat> now, whatever we have been doing so far, it's basically inline within this file. And this is not something maintainable. And that's the reason we have socket controllers, or I would say channel controllers, which let you basically abstract all this code to dedicated classes itself. So I'm going to remove everything. And I, I'm going to say, uh, whenever I connect to the channel called chat, we need to instantiate chat controller. So if I come here and say a hey, make controller chat and it will ask me for HTTP request or a WebSocket channel, I'll say WebSocket channel and open the file here. So chat controller and out here, we're going to do the same thing. So uh, very first we'll say uh, console.log connected socket ID will be socket.id, okay? Whenever we get a message, so we're gonna say socket.on a message, that's a function where we receive the message. We're gonna say socket.emit the message back, message and making sure we do it to everyone. And also for the disconnected one, we can basically create a method on the class itself. So we can say disconnected socket console.log uh, disconnected socket ID will be socket.id. Now go back to our server, come here, refresh, we do receive a hello world out here and to console log which says first we disconnected from the old socket and now we are we have been connected to a newer one. So what we basically did out here is uh, moved all the code from uh, this particular file to a dedicated controller. Now we can take a step ahead and basically remove this uh, binding from here because doing everything inside constructor is not something you're going to enjoy. So what we can do is we can basically create a listener as a method on this class. Now every listener starts with the on method out here. So on and wherever the name of the event is. 
So we're going to say on message, receive the message here, and do the same thing back. So remove it, come here. Now we need to reference it as this.socket. So come back, refresh for sure. Everything works as expected. Apart from that, all of these listeners, whether these are inline listeners or dedicated methods, can be generator functions, which means if you want to perform async tasks like pull something from a database or write to a Redis server, you can do it with the help of the yield keyword. So if I save the file, go back and refresh, yep, everything works as expected again. So this is all related to basically setting up uh, the channels, creating controllers. Now the next thing is we can also bind our middleware to these channels in the same way we do it with our routes. So what I'm going to do is out here, uh, I'll create a new file called kernel.js, which basically is a way for us to manage our middleware related to WebSocket only. Uh, in the same way we have kernel.js file for the HTTP requests. So out here, uh, I'm going to say constant WS, use the provider again, create a variable for global middleware. That will be an array and a named middleware uh, that will be an object. So global middleware will be executed every time a new socket joins. Uh, no matter on which channel, uh, name middleware are the one that we're going to assign ourselves to each individual channel. And out here we can say ws dot global, uh, the global middleware, and ws dot named, going to be the name middleware, okay? And as a demo, we're basically going to set up our authentication middleware. So, uh, that is middleware, auth init. And for the named one, we're going to say auth, Adonis, middleware, auth, okay? And we also need to load this file. So I'm going back to bootstrap, HTTP, and out here, we need to say load the kernel file. And now let's say we want everyone to be logged in before they really connect to the chat controller. So. Uh, or I would say chat channel. I'm gonna say middleware opt. Come back, do a refresh. Boom, we receive an error saying login failure, which means we are not authenticated and we cannot connect to this channel. See how easy and simple it is. So I believe that's all from this video. Next video, we're gonna take a look at the presence feature of the WebSocket provider. Goodbye.